Greetings there everybody and welcome back to TNO The Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. USA Lover, but a new approach. Integrating America's schools is proving even more difficult than we anticipated, as many state governments, mostly in the South, do their utmost to block and misdirect our efforts. It also doesn't help that the majority of black people live in homogeneous ghettos too far away from white school districts. To be practical, leading to a primary method of integrating schools being busing black students into their newly desegregated schools. Obstruction of state governments are well aware of this and are going to almost ridiculous lengths to prevent us from being able to bus black students just desperately trying to find excuses for why their school buses aren't available to us. We try the carrot and now it's time for the stick. Despite the pretensions and self-determination, states are still heavily dependent on federal funding to stay float, particularly poor southern states. It's about time they learn that deliberately standing in the way of integration will not come without consequences. Let's see if they fall in line on comply with integration after we threaten to shut down their federal funding and run the pocketbook. And we have to sign elections, it is 68, but we'll see what we can do. Gold water versus RFK. Hopefully we do okay. Oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. And we won pretty handily here. Um, on 40 million versus 48 and a half. So election day. Good job, President Kennedy. So, um, we now have 30. Oh, look at that. 38 progressive senators. And the 19 nationalists, which is the same amount of Republicans and 22 Democrats. Overall, not bad. The solid South is, uh, wow. Except Texas. Jesus. This is a weird snake all the way through here. That is very odd. But, very interesting. Previous. Wow. But anyways, very gold water. The slimy Democratic Center from Arizona has become an increasingly painful thorn in her side. Seemingly opposed to every single one of her policies and ideals. Gold has become a stronghold, or strong critic of her administration, and spends most of his time outside of Congress ranting and raving on TV screens and radio stations up across America. He's become noticeably more vocal lately after we announced our ability to withhold federal funding from states that refuse to comply with school integration. Like most racists, he's been protesting the integration using thinly veiled arguments for the rights of the states to be, we must suppose, as racist as they choose. The Democrats love this stuff and the rightists are, that are supposed party brothers have let their approval be heard. The general consensus at the moment seems to be that Goldwater is just angling to increase his popularity in the Midwest, but regardless of his moves, he's proving to be one of our major opponents in Washington, and we need to find some way to effectively deal with them before his dominance of the political discourse comes to bite us in the butt at the polling booth. Integration busing is very popular at the moment among all but our strongest supporters, and if we continue to aggressively push busing, it might just hurt us and give gold water and his oak more ammunition. We could steam ahead with our plans no matter what the cost, we could pull back and preserve our political capital. After all, surely a fire starved oxygen won't cut it out. No one will stand in the way. Integration will suffer. We just had an election. Who cares? Um, so now with the elections done, we're of course still doing uh, un American institutions. We're going to try again with the No Child Left Behind Act. Now, it might go well for us, it might not, but. Uh, <clears throat> With elections now over and having us having way more progressive senators, we should do okay. The thoroughly started. Pa, that rat dude, Goldwater, saw his opportunity and went for the throat. They called a bluff on integration, busting in a TV interview, and won't stop giving quotes about the supposed evils of the federal government to any journalist with a notepad and a fountain pen. Well, the president was forced to respond in kind, but this remark seemed to be inflating the anger of the states' rights types as well as the usual racists. Just to put it simply, the situation is going back quicker than we were able to react to it. Goldwater seems to always be able to pee two steps ahead. And is able to turn every move we make to his advantage. To make matters worse, Goldwater had quite a bit of success in mobilizing the small government grassroots by pushing the angle that integration busing is an example of federal tyrannies triumphing over the rights of the states. Goldwater has very quickly become the biggest danger to our administration. We can only hope his run of good luck runs out before he becomes too big to stop. He's playing like a gosh darn fiddle, and look at that! We definitely have at least 50 here, so 56 it looks like, so I'm no longer concerned. The many heads of the Hydra. The prevailing state. Or winds of American politics blow in the direction of progressivism, but not all those in government are prepared to join the president's righteous crusade against injustice. Plenty of ancient old toads from the lesson line administrations pop in America's Lamberthine institutions, slagging off the new boss while also never failing to collect the paycheck every week. It's about time for enemies in the government and learn not to bite the hand that feeds them. They're plenty to go after, but Hoover and the FBI stand as the first unruly mutt to be brought to heel. No matter the cost, all traces of reaction and dissent must be purged from the government and so that nothing and no one stands in the way of justice for all Americans. Clowns lost to me, jokers to the right. The power of compromise. Think we uh, brought the pot down from a bulldozer by scaling back our integration uh, busting policy, preserving a political capital and robbing Gold War of a public outrage he wanted to stoke? No, he didn't. Ultimately, we scaled the bus, uh, back busing to affect only consisting states, no fun states' rights angle that was a tenfold of Goldwater's argument. Nevertheless, it's hard to see this as a victory. We avoided a fight only by modifying our policies to fit the preferences of a bunch of crypto racists who'd rip up the civil rights after they thought they could get away with it. At least Goldwater has been forced to begrudgingly consent to busing, though, and Democrats can see their endless, endless belly aching. Some of this doesn't seem quite right, though. Goldwater's been uncharacteristically quiet of late and seems to have dipped out of the public spotlight he loves so much. Worryingly, it seems really, it's rather like the calm before the storm. What's he up to? Well, huh? What do you mean? No, we, no, I don't understand. 
Uh, but whatever, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. But no child left behind, I'm not super concerned about that. Uh, that's pretty good overall. Uh, that's pretty good. Inflation is still, it's still going up. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the National Labor Relations Act. And then we'll finally do again the Economic Opportunity Act and hopefully pass both. Well, that'll be super, super important for us to do so. Um, so if you don't need this game, please go right ahead to that one, especially the Economic Opportunity Act as well. Because I would definitely want to pass Social Security. With Congress convinced and the American people of peace, there's no better time to avoid or to hold the common issue of a work money in time to a vote. The Social Security Act is one of several proposals comprising what history will consider the most comprehensive piece of economic reform introduced capital since the New Deal era. I might have read this before, too. Um, it establishes systems aimed at providing monetary assistance to those who cannot provide for themselves, the unemployed, the retired, and the disabled, all managed by a dedicated government agency. The war in poverty may not even enter uh, generation or children's generation or their children's, but we will sound as death knell with this act's enshrinement, announce to the world that his days are numbers, and a hundred years or a thousand, the American people will celebrate a mission accomplished, take pride for having laid the foundations of the triumph, how the other half lives. For most, the day of the new school is a terrifying ordeal, but as Anthony Thomas walked through the swinging double doors of Rutherford Hayes Middle School, he most he felt excited, tempered slightly by an undercurrent of trepidation. As a school's first black student, he knew he represented his whole community to his fellow students, and resolved to make a good first impression and make the most of this new opportunity he's been given. 830 Science. Anthony could barely believe his eyes as he was showing the vast collection of equipment that his new school had for experiments. His teacher taught the class the basic principles of chemistry by showing them how to use elephant toothpaste. Anthony oohed and awed alongside his new classmates as a, as a black goop shot out of the tube. Oh, provide economic aid, huh? Or, oh, okay. Uh, 1230 uh, English Literature. Every student was handed a copy of Huckleberry Finn, which Anthony was surprised to learn was, was his keep. At his old school, they never had enough books for everyone. The students took turns to read out loud and found everyone's eyes on him when the boy next to him suddenly stopped. As it came to the next word, it was the N word. Ha, my fun, a fun word. For a moment, the boy seemed to be at loss for words, and he skipped over it, and the tension abated. It made Anthony feel less awkward. 4 30, home time. Anthony said bye to, uh, to the trio of boys who had been for an recess and made his way outside, trying to ignore the eyes of some of the other students and their parents uh, boring through him like a drill. He'd known from the beginning that being the school's first black kid wasn't going to be easy, but he was sure to be able to win them over in time. As he walked home, he resolved to push himself harder to school than ever before. He proved to all of them that he deserved to be there just as much as they did, and felt determined to make the most opportunity he'd be given to make his a better life a better life for himself, the first of many. And the season is over, which is good. As we're still looking at taxes. Oh man. We definitely need more. No child left behind. If it still fails, then you know it's bugged. The world begins with you. Wow. The greatest weapon against fascism. Uh, people's champion, unfortunately. Goldwater's at it again, positioning himself as a man of the people. He's been turning American towns, trying to stoke white middle class fear against our integration policies. England is, but it seems like we're a bunch of tyrants who want to crush the power of the states and corrupt the pure, wholesome, insipid, traditional American way of life. Town church and community halls across the nation are the sites of furious speeches, denouncing our administration and commentators on radio waves and TV screens everywhere rip apart the president's character and his every policy. Seems we've got no single friend at the moment. The white suburbanites are angry we're trying to help integrate their towns and communities. Urban Southerners won't stop hollering about states' rights, and even African Americans aren't in our corner at the moment, seeing as none as dedicated enough to integration. It's an old political adage that you can't make everyone happy, but we don't seem to be able to make anyone happy at the moment. All we can do is stay strong and hope it blows over soon. It's all gold water's fault, and it passes. Uh, did I read this before? Um, I'm pretty sure I read this one before. So if you'd like to do this one, please go right ahead again. Economic opportunity. We failed this one in the last episode. Uh, fight for the schools? Yeah, why not? I guess if we have to. So we have 38 plus 2 is 40. 40 plus 11 is 51. Nice. Very nice. Happy 1969, everybody. It's not going to be a good year for us, probably, with uh, things going to happen. Ooh, look at those bowlers. Well, that's not good for you, for Bulgaria, I guess. Spend even more money, because why not? Can't get rid of the rest of the army, because we're going to need them for uh, future conflicts. We'll put it like that. Because we already don't have enough for future conflicts anyways, but whatever. Pull out of Africa? I don't believe in pulling out. Here, you want to do this one? Sure, why not? Because we can. Uh, 69, Anti-tank, anti-tank, very good. Economic Opportunity Act. Best time to pass a whole bunch of crap after you win elections. Oh boy. Even in our own timeline. Japanese effort captured, huh? We're a danger to the right, which means we've got to keep an eye on how radical we get. To end up uh, of a dream. When we uh, last stood to take the oath of office, our uh, president RFK stood before a nation that dared to hope that 
things could be better. Now he gazed out of the assembled thousands who had come to see him. He knew that hope was no longer daring. It was natural, open, loud, and proud in their faces, the men and women, the white man and the black, the Jew and the Gentile. He could see for the first time in America that one of the future to arrive. He beamed as he stepped up to the podium, letting the roaring cheers wash over him. Deep down, he clearly hoped that John was watching wherever he was. We're here to stand today in the name of liberty and justice. At the heart of Western democracy is a belief that all men are created equal, and so extension of this belief and the enlargement of liberty for all must be the supreme goal of a Western society. Others have turned down this goal and marched into, on into the darkness and decay. Yet where they have faltered, we have pressed forwards. In our four short years, we have extended the branch of freedom and human rights to the wall, no matter the race, color, creed, or stature in life. But as in all things, justice is never final. To walk the path through a better future is to walk a path without end. There will be those who will try to steer us from the path, and those who try to insist that we have walked far enough. We must always recognize that the fact that the work to better fulfill the promise that our God-given country is founded upon shall never be finished. We must keep walking, keep improving, keep striving to create a true land of liberty that will shine, shine bright in a world of darkness. President Kennedy smiled even brighter as the crowd applauded. He knew that he could not grow complacent. There were still those who would try to stop him from doing what he truly needed to get done, yet knowing that the majority of America was with him made him all the more resolute in his ambitions, his dream, John's dream, the American dream, will be realized for the sake of those smiling faces before him. He would fight for all of them and fight against any who would stand in his way, and he would do it all gladly, not because it was easy, because, but because it was hard. Um, Alfred Lincoln was used to the cold but never the, over the hunger. As the wind rushed in from Lake Michigan at the top, or the soup kitchen on Lake Palina Street, Chilling him to his bones, he cupped his bowl delicately as he turned into the shelter, not wanting to waste a single drop before he could guzzle it down. He didn't make eye contact with the young woman who had handed him the bowl. She was younger than the usual crowd man in the soup line who would sometimes look at Alfred with a mixture of disdain and self-importance. Cheery, they called her, and while Alfred was grateful to have a square meal a day on the freezing streets, he'd prefer it if it didn't come with a side of pitying condensation. He forgot this, a tuck on his elbow brought Alfred back to his senses as a young woman from the line pushed a bundle of crackers and an apple and a few sachets of powders, stamped with vitamin supplements, American Economic Opportunity Commission on the side, but the soup, you won't catch a cold or flu with that. Thanks, Alfred grunted, pointedly refusing to pick up the vitamins. Don't you have anything to be doing? The lady blinked, but never broke eye contact with Alfred before replying. This is the right thing to do. Admin efficiency gets worse. So moderate subsidies with generous subsidies. Cost goes up. Better monthly poverty improvement. More growth, but more inflation. Pretty normal stuff. Oh my god. That goes up your choices. There's a time when uh, anger or. Uh, oh, look at that. Prime Minister dismantles Australian nuclear arsenal. Wow. Oh, uh, goodness, one too, though. Uh, there's a time when the anger at the war was concentrated among young radicals, but as more and more American boys came back to dead in the West African War, so showed no signs of ending. Two years and more after it began, that pe angry people in the streets seemed older, wider, and more middle class than time passed. The new strain of anti war protesters, now more conservative than its predecessors, listened to the one woman, Phil Schleife. Years of speaking futilely on the same topic had darkened her mood and strengthened her mettle, and now she's on the National Mall making her point to an unprecedented audience. These parasitic degenerates that sit in the White House and on the Capitol, what word is more suitable for them than grave diggers? What is the purpose but the destruction of America, and what point is there for us to bathe their dictate to fight on behalf of this afted colonist de Gaulle? The crowd grew suffused by dark rage, shouted its approval, Schleife continued on. All this is clearly a fascistic plot to distract America with sideshows while the evil empires of Japan and Germany built their arsenals to prepare to snuff out the last abode of God-given freedom. Thanks to these great di diggers, uh, America is dying and her nation's soul is being corrupted unto death because of this war, because of uh, communist infiltration at all levels. Shall we tolerate this any longer? All the people have but one reply. No. Queen of Lilium. Uh, why I'm leaving the Republican Party, some would say, you are how others perceive you. Beast, monsters, mortal, foes will become so because their inhumanity is incorrigible to certain principles and convictions. These words will surely be seen as a barb and that perception will spread like a plague post-haste. For Phyllis Schleife, that sounds she wrote to whatever singer more than any other living being. The sniggering uh, elitist political field of the battle had not been kind of conservative throughout history. That was what she wrote with a quiet sort of anger. <clears throat> Today was no different than the last. First, a sabotage of Taft, another despicable coalition she had called home and betrayed them all. Conservatives from shore to shining shore looked up to Goldwater like uh, the sick looked up to a doctor. A subject to savior, the liberals with forked tongues that snatched that away that golden carrot. One too many times, she said, joining the Nationals with a stated goal. MCS and Waltz were not at least stooges for all their buffoonery. They were not tantalous. Eternally bound in the cycle, they did not have to be driven insane. Earth and home had betrayed conservatives, betrayed her, betrayed her. Uh, the pen became heavier in her hand. She stopped bringing her arm across her eyes for fear tears would mark the article. <clears throat> she looked up in that office full of dark, night darkness, night's darkness. She imagined a presidential offer, office for herself where she would select the true Republican heroes. Given the fortress of a prestigious spot before death, that warm fence become cold. For now, those eyes were terrifying ones, staring down at her uh, in, ju in judgment. She saw those eyes as something terrible. The pressure she placed on that pen caused it to shatter. No dawn for Republicans. Hey, you know, political power is good. We also do a lot of stuff too later, too. Um, but I definitely want to do this one. Uh, 
Planned Suburbs? Uh, National Ethics Commission. As part of the country's finely tuned system of checks and balances, America's venerable constitution has granted the president the power to create new agencies and commissions without consulting Congress on the matter. Oftentimes, these organizations, befitting the ad hoc nature of their creation, tackle single issues with the resources they are apportioned. President Kennedy seen it fit to form such one such commission by the executive order. The National Ethics Commission's missions bear a uh, simplicity that makes a mask its significance. To ensure that the government enforces the law to both its letter and spirit and a just world, the president can trust his subordinates across the country to uphold their oaths, for especially unjust world in remarks that the NEC is a necessity in order to protect the march of progress. Give more uh, uh, political power, too. <clears throat> Which is nice. Oh. Happy march, everybody. Still building ourselves up air pretty much everywhere. Hey, it passes. And one of the biggest challenges to American economics in the 20th century. Uh, Bobby Kennedy has signed the sweeping National Labor Relations Act and all. Over now, the balance of uh, power in the large economy of the world has shifted with workers and employees granted unalienable and legal rights that would further balance the position vis a vis their employers. One of the NLRA's largest components is the recognition of trade unions, banning employers from firing workers or trying to intimidate and haul anyone who tries to organize into workplaces. We see penalties and fines for any company found to have broken this law. Regulations mandating the full-time workers be given an eight-hour workday, or at least generous overtime pay is another large component of the NLRA. Penalties will be put in place to prevent companies from trying to get around this, including rules on all who is classified as part-time, a contractor, freelance, and uh, all categories be given the same or equivalent benefits and rights as full-time employees. One of the most important aspects is the establishment of a federal pension system. From now on, a small percentage of the employee's paycheck will be withheld and paid in the F FPS. This money will be put in the safe investments such as government bonds to continue to grow the pot. When retiring at a minimum age of 65 or whenever a worker is severely injured and unable to continue working, a livable pension will be paid to them for the rest of their lives annually just for, for inflation. <clears throat> Uh, the only way to maintain a strong economy and a strong democracy is to give everyone in the nation the ability to make a living, the president said as he signed into law. To make enough to put food on the table and a roof over their heads, enjoy the fruits of their labor with leisure, and to maintain the dignity and freedom, never to be undermined by the greed and short-sightedness of their bosses. While opposition from business groups, conservatives, anti-unionists, and free market proponents have been intense, Wall Street has seen a sharp drop in its value when the bill passed. The NRLRA has proven to be popular with the majority of the American workers and voters. Secure place in American law for years to come. Hooray for the NLRA. Social Security Act. For an adventure for taking non social security acts, folks, until the social security has been sent through Congress. Dixie Crass will trust us less if we go through this. And I'm not so concerned. 40, 51, 53. Not bad. I'm just worried about the cost. Oh, we are barely have enough here. Beach Boys on Murder going to put that. Please go ahead. Yeah, we're growing more, and this is pushing to a slightly better, but that dad is still. Mm. The world begins anew. I know many who lament despair of the state of the country in these uncertain times. They have seen the injustice at it all, yet cannot fathom how they can treat it. They see within themselves only one man, one woman, facing an unstoppable behemoth, and so raise their arms in frustration that's and say that nothing can stop its onslaught. I disagree. History is replete, or replete with examples of one changing in the lives of many. One priest born of Carpenter in Judea became a figure worshipped by a billion souls a day. One sailor adventured westward with some hundreds of his face, and, in his faith, and doing so found in the first of our forefathers many colonies. One nomad in the steps of Asia conquered ancient civilization to found an empire that stretched from Beijing to Moscow. Even one of this was good head too. These men alone prove that the actions of a few can forever change the course of history and that you can yourself bring change to the country. The shape of today's world began with them, let the countries let the futures then begin with you. Academic base improves as well, which is nice. Uh, three days left, we should be able to pass this, so. Not super concerned. I'm just concerned about the money, like I said. That's what I'm really concerned about. So when do we... Oh, Zambia, Popular Republic of Mozambique. Nothing nationalists. Here. All OFN aligned, which is very, very good. Battle priest in Russia. Ah, there we go. Oh, literally, as soon as I asked, it happens. Nice. There, do that one. You want to do this, please? Go ahead. Yay. Let them kill each other, because we don't really care. 38, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Oh, we're a dangerous progressive, which means we've got to start editing some things here, too. Um, but let's begin. The world begins with you, which is not bad. Um, the greatest weapon against fascism. Since our entry in the Second World War, America has been embroiled in a terrible struggle against the pirates of fascism. The Japanese menace looms beyond our allies in the Pacific, and the Nazi rocketeers have crushed once free peoples of Europe beneath the Paul's jackboot. As soon engulfs the world in oppressive shadow, we remain standing, bloody, beaten, and standing against all odds, to bear freedom's torch and a light, a path for those who resist within without its bounds. 
Despite what certain warmongers will tell you, however, this struggle cannot be won by the force of arms, nor by rudeness of race for weapons of mass destruction. Indeed, this war is unique among humanity's long history of conflicts that in it cannot be, over, cannot be won by one stride in true methods of warfare. Rather, our greatest weapon against the fascist threat is the values and principles that they had long defined Western civilization, freedom, liberty, equality, and democracy. Duly applied, these shall become stony foundations of a healthy and prosperous society built to the last of trials of some time far better than autocrats and other foundations quicksand and mud. Sam will be expanded. Cost of support of the bill. Uh oh. Raise the cost of support of the bill. Oh boy. Well, the that's not Neo good. Silver Act. President Kennedy quickly leafed through the proposed bill. A copy of the New York Times left haphazardly on the desk, printed in bold letters reading its title, Silver Shortage. Well, we're in this mess, Senator. How do you propose we get us out of it? Kennedy asked, looking up at the bespeckled figure sitting in front of him. The proposed Silver Reserve Act will grant the presidency the ability to suspend the convertibility of the dollar to silver, Mr. President. Free float in the dollar will let the Fed put more money into the circulation. But an end to the whole crisis, Bennett replied, passing a copy of the bill onto one of his aides. Kennedy nodded. How soon can you get this past the Senate? Day yeah, tomorrow, a few holdouts, but not enough to a matter. Well, then the president offered the senator a hand. It's been quite a pleasure working with you, Senator. Bennett shook the hand. Might as well, Mr. President, despite our differences. I'll be seeing the chairman later today. Any recommendations? I focus on curtailing inflation, though I'm, I'm sure many of our more liberal friends would push for more aggressive monetary policy, Bennett replied evenly. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be my preference, but the choice is yours, Mr. President. Chairman informed. Way less inflation, but more, more growth. We want more growth. Hey, inflation goes down more, right? Maximize that growth, even though I do. I, you know, I say maximize growth, even though I'm like whatever for the GDP. I'm more like let's get rid of the debt. So, um, in the meantime, though, we are making sure we're not going to die of a bridge of political divide. Democrat, Republican, National, Progressive, whatever the label, one can deny they belong to an American. They all obey the same laws, read the same histories, and share the same culture with variations from state to state, of course. They speak the same language somewhat, uphold the same values with divergent interpretations, live within the same country, although a state may be on its own country, according to some. They may have differences as distinct as night and day, but sure as the sun rises and sets in 24 hours, they are all Americans and Alabamans and Texans and Californians and more. We must not let these divisions grow to disrupt the great identity of which we all share as fellow Americans. That path leads to disunion and suffering. Whenever possible, let us reconcile our petty differences and conscience in the spirit of a good American, with open arms and a wide smile, with malice towards none, and in charity for all. We'll see about that. If you wonder about this, please go ahead. Anyone deserves a fair chance. Anyone wonder about an increase in administrative efficiency, please go right ahead too. The end of an era. We live in the managerial age, as after all. Thank God they caught him. So I'm all bust. Ah. So right now, what do we have here? Yeah, that's not bad. Which is the effect already applied, which is not bad. It's better than it was, but it could be even better than that, though, still. Um, 1969, we're working on that stuff still. Let's go with this one. Bridge on the political divide is going to cost 100 political power, which sucks, but uh, a gentle, firm statement. American democracy is built with a peaceful. Oh, we're going to this, please go ahead. Peaceful dialogue in mind, it gains nothing from claiming laws by force, and gains everything from simply hearing what the other side has to say. From two, diverging opinions emerges a synthesis satisfactory to all parties, in turn leading to a consensus that uh, will benefit the greater good. This has served as well for 200 years. Petty tyrants and dictators are free to claim violence as their sole domain. This does not mean, however, that we lack the fortitude to achieve our aims. We do employ force, albeit in more subtle ways, from, back in, from words backed by ironclad promises. Gentle hands us lead astray sheep back to the flock. Diplomacy powers the checks and balances in which our nation operates, and the president is not afraid to utilize it for the good of party and country. Yeah. Well, I just say, yeah. Oh, we got, oh, oh, bridge, that, shh, Nikes, we got someone, oh, look at that pee, pee three, over three a day, my god, score, wait, look at that, score effects, under income taxation, plus point three. what, I'm not going to complain that much, because we went from two, to basically not being able to pass the Social Security Act, to having more than enough from the entire pact, like, what the heck, okay, I'm okay with that, Equal to any other president, which is what we want. Um, so, sure, why not? Everyone deserves a fair sh a chance. Essentially, the American mythos is the idea that the United States is a land of opportunity where anyone can prosper through their hold on work and merit. Millions of our ancestors and their families from a hundred different nations, faiths, and backgrounds have traveled great distances and endured great pains for, to start new lives with this promise of mind. For some, this country fulfilled their end of the bargain, and so they and theirs lived happily thereafter. Sad is not a common occurrence. A great many others lived lives no different from what they had left behind. Miserable, pathetic, apopousers. Apopousers. Too many suffer the same withering glares they long to escape, whether for the race, faith, or sex. Too many die with only graves under their name. To a great shame, this land of opportunity favored a select few and left the rest to, to wail and gnash their teeth.
President Kennedy aspires to bring Americans closer to what he had promised, legislation by legislation. Everyone deserves a fair chance in his America, informing them of his efforts will buoy their hearts in anticipation for what will come. Oh. Oh, they actually... Are they done? French resistance? What the barnacles are going on? Secret army. A bunch of fascists versus a bunch of liberals. While Burgundy just go like, bruh. Oh, and the Reds are still here. Oh, I don't turn matter. Which stock even for that? Please grab it too. A gentle hand, a firm statement. Hey, 11 billion is even better than before, too. Nice. Nice. Screw it. Let's get medical. Oh boy. One of the biggest aspects of RFKs. Agenda is to improve the nation's healthcare system to make it even easier for people to see doctors and get medicine and treatment that may not have been able to receive before due to a lack of access or lack of money to pay for. But in order to even begin the process of expanding healthcare to more people, Bobby has had to get his party out on side uh, to support him, which is easier said than done. While everyone in the party is generally in favor of increasing health spending and getting more doctors in hospitals, it's an nitty gritty details that are causing issues that will have to be dealt with. There are several, three general directions the president can go. He can pitch his idea to cover the large number of Americans as possible. An almost fully national health system that many other nations haven't been establishing around the world. The problem is that some of the more radical members of the Progressive Caucus may be a bit iffy about the more vague and generalized terms and the fact that it would be a full government run and managed health, uh, health insurance system. Oh boy. President Kennedy can also focus on specific areas of the nation that have worse health systems due to the intrinsic poverty and lack of development, such as Mississippi and Alabama. While the Nationals will undoubtedly support this measure, the lack of support in struggling cities in the North or rapidly growing cities in the West will be seen as a slap in the face. Finally, the President can instead focus as, as a civil rights issue. This new plan will help African Americans and other marginalized peoples in the U.S. as they are usually denied the same health coverage and benefits that the white people so easily receive. Most of the party will support this measure, though it will come at the expense of support from the Nationalists. Especially segregationists have already made such a nuance and fuss over schools. But in all in all, there's no easy answer, but Robert Kennedy has to make a choice. All America? South? Blacks? We don't care about Blacks or South, we want for all for America. We're gonna go bankrupt. A national healthcare system? Years of planning with cold, hard data to best govern it to the nation's needs, like a beautiful gown on a womanly figure? Oh, God. Tense negotiations in the dead of the night, damp lamplight and lit cigars, illuminating sheets of paper crisscrossing by red ink. I've heard about this too, please go ahead too. Um, speech after tiring speech in 100 cities, thousands of hours drained away, all to hardened wills, turn hearts and so doubt. Few but for the MPP's far sighted ambition, the days of efforts would bear fruit will come, and yet here it is, and it's a sempiternal glory. Our past acts of familiar with, but not quite achieved, the concept of universal health care. Total coverage for all citizens, free of charge, years prior, that some of you in the party would balk at the costs involved for such a program, let alone the wisdom of granting free and unrestricted health care paid for by the government. But the administration has persisted slowly winning the hearts and votes until the National Health Care Act finally stands for Congress. Or to be judged for its worth, it passed. The mechanisms for the most robust universal health care system in the world shall soon be put in place. Significant victory for both American democracy and the people it serves. Whatever happens, congratulations for having reached this point. What's happened to pass the National Health Care Act? Oh, Bobby. Oh, Bobby, Bobby. Oh! Oh, oh! Oh, they actually did finally break it free. Nice, finally. Thank God we're done with this. I hate that this is still bugged. Even before we even annex this stuff, it was still bugged. I hate how bugged this is. Um, and we're not going to be able to pay off the debt if we pass this. Oh, God. Inflation's looking a lot better, though. Growth is looking not too bad. Oh, but happy. October, everybody. New year for you and me. The Social Security Act passes, of all things, of sweeping over all of the American welfare systems just past Congress, as now heading to the resolute desk for President Kennedy to sign. The battle to pass law has been a long and tough one, with opponents on all sides battling against the laws it was written. Democrats and National Caucus members complain about the cost and expansion of the welfare system, claiming that it would just add billions to the budget and reducing incentives for people to work if they can just live off the government. But... There's some members of progressives, and even further to the left, that say the bill doesn't go far enough. There'll be some, like the elderly and disabled, that'll have to jump through the hoops and any struggle to get the aid they need, so the restrictions should be even more for the loosen and payments increase even more. Overall, it seems that the most congressmen will support the Social Security Act, in which will expand the number of people that can receive it, cut the red tape that drains so much money off a system that's supposed to help people who have fallen on hard times or those who are too old to work anymore, and not belittle or humiliate them. That's to say, first and foremost, it'd be a safety net to catch those that fall through society's cracks, the poor, homeless, injured, and elderly. In a statement released to the press after the announcement of the passing of the bill, President Kennedy said that he will be signing the law tomorrow to make it law. Thanks to those all who uh, voted in favor of the act for their compassion, humanity, and care for the less fortunate in our nation, but otherwise be cast aside or ignored. I'll be darned. So, improve effect social funding, improve the rights and quality of life of Americans around the world, add an efficiency begins to rapidly worsen, replace American malaise with a ray of hope, women in the workplace gets replaced with legal equality, unique consumer goods goes up, but production factor goes up as well. Um, poverty will begin to rapidly improve, more growth, but more inflation will decrease, less inf 
less inflation, even though we're going to be technically spending more money, but we'll have less inflation, more growth, spend a schnikey ton of uh, money in the meantime, the you know, poverty gets even better. Well, I'll be gosh darned. Let's take a look here. Not bad. 69, 69 World Series, remember that? Please go ahead. We're like just blowing everything we have on uh, civilian spending. What is this? 10% other costs? Is that debt costs? It doesn't say. Civvy so spending. What, what, what is that? Huh. Um. Oh, well, minus 0.37. Uh, healthcare, admin efficiency. It's still going up. This is going to improve very soon. Academic base, primary schooling. The secondary schooling, so we get more growth, hopefully. More research speed. Need to consumer goods goes further. And it goes up, actually, which is not good. And then we'll go change to get modern research facilities, probably to better education stuff, maybe? But I did grab a cup of mint tea here as well. So advanced research facilities, and you get more growth, which is also very good too. Stuff we can all probably approve of. I don't care if it's ahead of time. I, at this point, I don't really care at all. Well, you and me, let's see if we can pass some healthcare. Equal to any other president. <laughs> Republicans say no. For the nationalists are like, sure. And Democrats are like, okay, so that's 42, 52, we'll be fine. Planned suburbs. America seems to grow regardless of its politics with the formal prohibition of redlining. We now have an opportunity to wipe the slate clean up to some extent with its new construction projects. The suburb of the future shall be built today, President Kennedy boasted, and will be well planned, well connected, and well integrated. Within, well within the reach of hospitals and police departments and supermarkets, well within reach for the cities and its jobs, well within reach for the rock pockets of any American, white, black, or anyone else. Um, if you're wondering about this, please go ahead with Kennedy, oh boy. In order to better bring this to fruition, the MPP congressmen have brought forward the Fair Housing Act from the committee. Its articles codify the President's assurances in the text worthy of joining the ranks of American Legal Code. Resistance is an inevitability. Now at least from the South, and again the Titanic Battle for the Civil Rights Act has made an attempt to pass the bills that follow its pale that follow it in pale comparison. Nice. Happy December, everybody. Happy December. God dang, that tea is hot. Anyways. Don't need to do that anymore either, but whatever. Nope. I don't care about the growth as much as... Well, maybe we should focus maybe more on growth, but like... I want to cut down the debt. I've not been able to cut down the debt enough. Uh, it hurts me. It hurts me so. Pirates looking way better, though. LBJ, Bennett, Wallace, communism, the national, it passes. They said it couldn't be done, it would be too hard, it would be too expensive, it violates the freedoms, it'll never pass Congress. Oh, oh boy. Uh, well, you know what, it did. The National Health Care Act, to be signed by President Robert Kennedy in the Grand Rose Garden Ceremonies, now to be the law of the land, and one of the biggest, most sweeping acts ever undertaken by the federal government, the United States health care system, has just been overhauled from the ground up. Every single America will soon experience the effects of the NHA for undoubtedly and unequivocally better. It's a massive law. It'll take a decade or more to realize the full scope. In the next few months, every hospital in the nation will become the direct property the state it resides in. The federal government will pay the previous owners for 75% of the value of the land and civilians, while the state provides the other 25%. Every doctor, nurse, pharmacist, dentist, specialist, technician, and general will be employed by each state's Department of Health for the vast majority of life-saving and life-extending procedures. There will be no direct cost to the patient, instead of being paid for by a mandatory national insurance plan that will pay each state for the procedure. All private health insurance plans will be subsumed by the national system. The NHA has mandated a minimum acceptable level of care for the nation as a whole, but provides subsidies and payments to every state to ensure that they can match or even succeed the minimum standards. Despite the opposition for fiscal hawks, free market advocates, small government support, and the lobbies of the health insurance and healthcare industries, support for the laws is widespread across the nation. The harrowing stories of how some have been left destitute due to their medical bills, or how some were turned away from the preventative treatments due to unavailability, and the many, many allegations of fraud and improper practice, shifted to public support in favor of the NHA and pushed many reluctant senators to vote in favor. Now, every American, no matter their race, their income, location, or health, can, can and will get the care they need. Stunning. Uh, let's see. Add national health care system. Affect social funding, more growth by 0.1%, remove emergency support, add universal coverage. Um, all Americans, regardless of age, gender, race, or class, will progressively gain access to the benefits of public health care. Oh boy, that's not good right there. Oh god. We still have a surplus somehow. Jesus Christ. And yet, inflation doesn't go up at all. But whatever. Um. We really do live in a society. 
Uh, through all the rigorous pursuit of truth and justice, we have come to learn of the harsh truths and grave injustices both. We have learned of what? No, web work. A clan's patrons stretching from coast to coast, colluding with one another to keep the car carcass of a hateful ideology alive. We have learned of suffering dealt directly and indirectly by Americans to Americans born with a misfortune of unlike skin. We have learned of iron fists that bear whips and chains and clad themselves in all glorious hues, lording over miserable men just as their ancestors had but a century ago. Now that we haven't known them, of course, since then, but enlightenment does bring clarity to sight. Words and actions of a reprehensible man, then puzzle pieces that are showing each some but not all, suddenly locking into the perfect shape now. We know the conviction, their utter belief, and the hatred which seems to look behind our every, our every corner. Now we know how far the poison has tainted the idyllic like veneer of American society, blemishing its hollow values with so much hypocrisy. Much has already been done to undo the damage. Perhaps we've still a long way to go from fully repairing the society from within. Just maybe. Critical inflation. Well, still 10%, which is not bad. We still have plenty of growth for now, too. It's alright, we're only spending money out the wazoo. Meaning your new neighbors. We've mostly dealt with uh, redlining their dis business and financial districts and communities, but unfortunately that's not enough to immediately tear down the invisible barriers for informally segregating American suburbs and neighborhoods. Forcibly integrating pre-existing suburbs is a fool's errand, but perhaps there's a way to bring America in a new age of racial harmony without having to confront all the baggage communities carry around with them. The solution, plans suburbs filled with affordable attract housing built on the outskirts of our major cities, intended to house inner city working class blacks and whites alike. We can give out interest-free loans to families wanting to settle there to prevent the possibility of black families getting right, blind right out of our new post-racial paradise. Surely once we get to know their new neighbors, people will be able to see past the skin color, we hope. Everyone's going to love it. They didn't love it. Well, here are the lights. Well, step by arduous step, we've taken the path to a brighter place, where every American is privileged to enjoy the essential values and virtues of their patrimony, freedom, liberty, equality, and prosperity. The journey has not been easy. Our feet are blistered and sore from the hundredfold miles of travel in the heat and roughness of inky black asphalt. Scars and wounds mar our flesh, left by monsters and bandits. The voices of doubt yet whisper from the recesses of our minds, tempting with us illusions of earthly comfort wherever our eyes land. So long has it been since we last laid in rest that we've forgotten the touch of soft cotton and embroidered linens. Dirty, famished, parched, the body can only do so much against its instinct and its beggars uh, us to stop even for a short while. But we have not stopped. We cannot stop, not now, not when we promise the land shimmers in the distant horizon. If we're to rest at our feet forever, then let them tread in the land of light, land of light, wherever, where forever it is beautiful. American mom, so a woman for president, huh? Whispered her, watching slave his interview from across the room. Well, it beats me, that's for darn sure. Never thought I'd see it in my day. He let out a little chunk off, finding the situation apparently rather humorous. I don't buy it, not for one second, muttered his co-producer Pete. This whole housewife act, you know what I mean? What sort of housewife even runs for president? What does she think she's kidding? She wants. To be a housewife, so bad she just stay home. You know, I heard she used to work for some think tank over DC. Doesn't get much less housewifey than that, huh? Oh, and her husband herb said herb that all simple laugh. That one's real kicker. He's some big shot lord down in St. Louis. It's like the jokes just write themselves. A homegrown American woman or housewife was never homegrown or housewife. Real Americans, my buddy, you and you pass for a better American housewife than her. Not much paying attention to herb, Pete went on, although I wonder how much of it actually really believes. I mean just how can she get up in front of the national television and say all this BS without a hint of doubt? And sit right with me, all these politicians and their constant lying scheme. It's already hard enough to trust a woman with power, but a woman politician, Schleffy, I don't think I'd ever find it in me to trust someone like her. Me neither, me neither Pete, me neither. Them. Americans from one coast to the other terrified of them. The hordes advancing over the hill, the darkness and the light intent on annihilating everything they hold dear. Believing themselves in constant danger of the men of their ancestors forcibly brought to the shore, they denounced. Oh boy. Um... Uh, the blacks as carrying the curse of Ham, or being inferior race, must be segregated unless they destroy the American way of life. Uh, <clears throat> Or, uh, uh, America's hatred is ossified over the decades, taking our every institution. It's got to end. The time's coming to wrench the dark throne of hate from America's heart to reform the nation and end the never ending culture war. It was only makes sense to start with schools, one of the most egregious examples of segregation today. They spend every day in proximity with black students, the white children will surely make friends with them and eventually graduate with a less prejudiced mindset than their parents before them. Or, uh, maybe in some cases, maybe more of them, though. It's past due that we intervene and push integration, perhaps by creating a formal federal agency responsible for integration. President Kennedy sits alone in the Oval Office and wonders what to do in his heart. He wants to forcibly integrate everything as fast as possible and wipe clean the stain of segregation from America. But something gnaws at him. Maybe too much, too fast will do more harm than good. Jack will have gone slow and steady. But Jack lies in the Arlington grave, and the President furrows his brow. It's my decision now for good or ill. Shock therapy is what he needs. Step by step. Honestly, step by step, it makes more sense, especially during the election year. But shock therapy, my friends. And they'll predict to get even more senators on our side. But, okay, why not? And the last, my friends. Uh, Rain Hoover in. Well, let's do the underlying problem. A hearing is unheard. A early miss of sh uh, some reported missing late pastor schedule. Orders, word, and phrase changing as they climbed down every rung in the ladder of the law enforcement. Letter swapped into the holy new messages by. 
uh, the town that reached a common patrolman. Work continues as we bring the rights of man of the south to prize rights to deprive south. Yeah, work continues as plottingly slow as it was since the days of reconstruction. We must admit to ourselves at this junction that we cannot continue unless we address the route from which these issues are birthed. If the Dixocrats aim to win this little war with a thousand bleeding prim pricks, then we shall have to grab them by the stem and route out all the way up to the godforsaken tip, a sledgehammer to the nail's problem. Oh god. Like a Trojan horse, did America wake up to new changes? Our integration agency officially exists after one of our allies in the Senate snuck it into a big, overly elaborate omnibus spending bill that none of our opponents could apparently be bothered reading, like normal. Goldwater is a power base confident in the lobby, being caught totally by surprise after they realized they voted for the very thing they spend most of their time arguing against. And President Kennedy only wishes he's been there to see the look on that slimy dude's face. Integration will finally be forced nationally as another alphabet agency joins this gang. We finally achieve something great without having to pull teeth, and integration is not just a fact of life. There's no way for Goldwater and his cronies to unshoot the gun. For now, Robert can feel free to ignore the tension over his head for once and pour a good cup of bourbon, raising covered his brother's memory. Feast by feast of Kennedy's legacy shine. So, we get worse political power, which is fine. Policy cost per capita, oh god. We get more protectable population, better monthly poverty, and better academic and research facilities monthly change. Academic base begins to improve, research facilities begin to rapidly improve, and poverty begin to slowly improve as well. Oh my god. How much lower can we go? Empire strikes back. We could hardly expect a gold water to say quiet after we tricked him into voting for one of the new integration agencies. Uh, and he's a finally returned fire. Earlier today, Goldwater and his coterie held a televised rally in Washington, denouncing President Kennedy's efforts to further integrate America, calling him a despot and decrying the supposed tyranny of the federal government over the rights of the states. Unsurprisingly, he's particularly angry about our dirty tricks and has repeatedly compared the president to the past disgraces of Nixon and Harding. Goldwater's charisma had made him the media's darling, and his ranting is being carried on a major, major TV station. We're already putting away some very angry calls and letters, both from the members of the public pissed off about integration, our party's faithful, who are upset that we've allegedly tarnished the cause by engaging in deceptive tactics. Pretty normal, though. Goldwater's increasing influence is becoming worrying, and we need to do something before we lose all public face. He can bark, but can he bite? But they didn't love it! As, uh, oh, oh, oh no. As we, all we wanted was for the people who have spent their whole lives living in racially homogeneous communities to immediately get used to the idea of living next to people different from them. But for some reason, it hasn't been the harmonious, as harmonious as we hoped. Our first working class plan so has been open, they're already filled with racial strife. Duh. Urban whites flocked our newly planned communities to get out of increasingly impoverished and crime in inner city neighborhoods, but quickly got angry at having to occasionally see black people doing such heinous things as just living their lives, following the law, and raising their kids. Things recently came to a head in one of our new suburbs outside of Chicago, where minor acts of vandalism against black families quickly escalated to full blown riot by, led by blue collar white worker whites, many of them first or second generation immigrants who have had little prior contact with black people. Uh, local police were able to put it down without any loss of life, but a handful of riders and their victims were in a hospital with serious injuries, it seems that. Despite our best efforts to the contrary, our new uh, post-racial suburbs have become just another battlefield's ongoing discord plaguing the nation. Why can't we be friends? Because we said so. The underlying problem. Into the lights. As many Brown v. Boards as it takes. Brown v. Board of Education was a landmark court case which marked the country's first step ever towards true equality for a century. By ruling segregation of public schools as an inherently void of constitutionality, the Supreme Court has shattered the old binding cobblestone walls which dot towns and cities nationwide, barring the black students from mingling with their white schoolmates, no matter how tenuous at the moment, colored children now have better legs to which they lift them, and there's other father's poverty thanks to this ruling. Look at that, thanks. Of course, aren't cause need as many Brown v. Boards as it can afford, for that great case alone has advanced to African Americans a lot by leaps and bounds. The president's advisor concluded that we can afford to hit the public opinion to share to a large share of it, doubtless from those who would see the administration's forthcoming actions as tyrannical. Yeah, sure, why not? We can campaign down here too. Keeping up with the Thomases. Winding his way through the suburban expense of Milwaukee, Anthony Thomas walked home from past school past dozens of houses, each uh, the image of the other. The sun just dipped below the horizon. The cicadas were out in this cool stillness of twilight. Serenading Anthony's made his way out again and passed at the same house with the same lit window and the same TV screen. His family had been only recently moved to the new suburb, a product of the president's plans to integrate a housing tract at affordable place prices. Most of the neighbors were white, but there were a few other black families here and there. Often found it hard to believe they lived in such a proximity to white families. They always seemed courteous enough, but who could tell the thorns of hate twisted their hearts, hidden away from their neighbors' eyes? As Anthony reached his new home, he was smiled to hear his father's favorite jazz recording play, filled the air with mellow saxophone notes and the clash of cymbals. Placed his books down, he joined his father and his sisters at the table. Anthony's mother led them in saying grace and served them all a plate of roast chicken with mashed potatoes as Anthony hurriedly, excitedly, told him about his day and all the wonderful things they had at his new school. Um, his parents smiled at each other and as he talked, maybe they really had a future here. Oh, it was about then that the brick crashed through the window, interrupting the fragile spell of peace. Uh... Anthony would never forget his father's faith, a momentous crestfallen expression before he simply almost muttered immediately. As the family did not leave the table, despite the smiles, the neighbors wouldn't ride out, knowing the culprit could just eat him out of the knowledge of them getting scot-free. 
The children tasted much. Children? The chicken tasted much better. And the next day, Anthony simply replied to their neighbor's smile with a replacement expression. Hadrian hey, comes in the sweetest packages. And then we're doing the underlying problem. And we read this one earlier, too. But I think I'm going to end it here. And uh, in the next episode, we'll probably finish out this campaign because we'll probably won't get all the way to 71 or 2. But uh, we'll probably get all the way down here as, as best we can. So, um, But it shouldn't be a long video. If you enjoyed the video, though, this video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when I continue pack panicking over the yearly surplus. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.